decomposition of the matrix exponential for self-inverse operators. In quantum mechanics and quantum computation, there is often a situation where the argument of an exponential function is a matrix. It is a so-called matrix exponential, a matrix function on square matrices analogous to the ordinary exponential function. This arises whenever we need to simulate the evolution of a quantum system under some Hamiltonian, about which there is a separate video. Thus, e to the power of x is an operator, and usually we want to transform it into a matrix or apply it as a quantum circuit. But how can we do this if x is an operator? In this video it will be shown that in a case when the x is self-inverse, the matrix exponential can be decomposed into two simple terms, and we will derive the corresponding formula. So, let there is an operator A and it is self-inverse. Then, we will prove the following formula for the exponentiation of this operator. First, let me remind you some of types of operators found in quantum mechanics. This is the Hermitian operator, which is equal to itself if it is transposed and complex conjugate. A Hermitian operator is a physicist's version of an object that mathematicians call a self-adjoint operator. The unitary operator, whose product by the Hermitian conjugate is equal to the identity matrix. And finally, a self-inverse operator. It is an operator which is equal to its inverse operator. The product of the operator on the inverse operator is equal to the unit matrix. This property is possessed, for example, by all three Pauli and the Hadamard operators. And we will use this fact for the derivation of the above equation. We start the derivation from the definition of a square matrix exponential and apply it to e to the power of i theta a. Then we divide the sum into summands with even and odd indices and denote them by the sum over p and the sum over q. Now simplify the resulting expression by writing the complex i to even and odd powers. For the case of the even power, we get the minus 1 to the power of p, and in the other, i multiplied by minus 1 to the power of q. Now you can see that under the signs of the sum you get the sine and cosine decomposed into the Maclaurin series. Finally, we are left with something to do with the operator A in the even and odd powers. Let's use a property that A is a self-inverse operator and consider these two cases. In the first case it is just a unit matrix, and in the other, it's operator A itself. Thus, we got rid of the operator A under the sum sign. Using all the obtained equalities, we get the final formula. One important use of this formula is to calculate the rotation operator. The rotation operator rotates a block vector shown by the orange arrow around the axis n, defined by the unit vector shown by the green arrow, by angle alpha. Vector sigma denotes the Pauli vector. n sigma is an operator, which we denote as an operator A. To be able to use the formula which we recently derived, it's efficient to show that this operator is self-inverse. First, let's calculate the squared operator and open the brackets. Squared Pauli operators give an identity matrix. For more information, you may watch the video about the algebra of the Pauli matrices. Then we group the terms with the identity operator and the others so that we can use the anti-commutation relations for the Pauli operators. Thus, the terms in red frames vanish. Taking into account that n is a unit vector, we are left with the identity operator. 
we have proved that sigma n is a self-inverse operator.